Okay, now if we look at L1, loop 1 here, as we move around the loop in the indicated direction, we see we first have a 6 volt drop, and it's a drop so it's positive. Okay, we'll see how that comes in in a minute. But we have a 6 volt drop. Well, yeah, we write down the 6 volts plus 6 volts because that's a drop across the source. Then we have the drop across the 8 ohm resistor. Since we have I2 going in the direction of the loop across the 8 ohm resistor, we're going to have 8 ohms times I2. That'll be the voltage drop. Remember, voltage drop is current times resistance. Across the 4 ohm resistance, we have a current of I2 plus I3 minus I4, which implies a voltage drop of 4 ohms times I2 plus I3 minus I4. Then across the 9 ohm resistance, we have a drop. Uh, well, the current is I1. The current here is I1. There's no branch point between here and here, so the current still has to be I1. 9 ohms times I1. So that this sum is the total voltage drop through the four circuit elements, the source, then the three resistors in this loop. And that voltage drop has to add up to zero. Now, the reason that has to add up to zero, incidentally, can be seen in a few different ways. One is that if we, uh, that the voltage at any given point doesn't change. So the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. So whatever voltage changes we have between here and here, if we go around the circuit, have to add up to zero. There's also conservation of energy, which is equivalent to what I just said. Uh, if you take a charge all the way around the circuit, uh, you'll end up back at the same point, so there'll be an, no net energy change. Uh, and also the whole idea of a conservative field, if you're familiar with the multivariate calculus and the definition of a conservative field. Okay, anyhow, there's your equation for the loop L1. Loop L2, yeah, let's go up and take a look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, if we go around loop L2, we have current I2 minus I1, as we saw before, going through the 3 ohms. So we'll have to have 3 ohms times I2 minus, I'm sorry, it's I1 minus I2. I said it wrong, but it's, it's labeled right. 3 ohms times I1 minus I2. Then plus what? We've got I3 going through the 6 ohm. That'll be 6 ohms times I3. And then we have the I2 going the wrong way. The loop goes this way. I2 is going this way, so it's going to be negative I2 times the 8 ohms. And all that has to add up to zero. In loop L3, we have I1 minus I2 minus I3 going in the direction of the loop through the 10 ohms and the 1 ohm. And really, the 10 ohms and the 1 ohm, since there's no branching between here, just add up to an 11 ohm resistance. So we have 11 ohms times I1 minus I2 minus I3, representing the drop here between these two resistors. We have a negative 5 ohms times I4, because the loop is going this way and the current's coming at us. So we have negative 5 ohms times I4. And again, going around the loop in this direction, the 6 ohms is uh, the I3 is going in the wrong direction through the 6 ohms. So it'll be negative 6 ohms times I3, and that's going to add up to zero. And then we do the same thing for the third loop, or the fourth loop. We have the I1 minus I2 minus I3 plus I4 going through the 3 ohms, and we see that represented here. We have the negative of the I1 plus I2 minus I4 going through the 4 ohms, so we're going to represent that with the negative 4 ohms times that current here. And the 5 ohms through the I4 going in the direction of the loop gives us 5 ohms times I4. And all that adds up to zero. To solve these equations, first we're going to want to just collect all the I1 terms and the I2 terms and the I3 and I4 terms, collect all the like terms together. We're going to also divide through by the ohms. Note that every term here has ohms 
as a factor except for the 6 volts. When we divide through this one by the ohms, we get 6 volts divided by ohms. Volts divided by ohms, of course, gives us units of amps. So this 6 volts will become a 6 amp. And what you're going to see in a minute is that that's going to be put on the other side of the equal sign since it doesn't contain an I, or since it doesn't have an I1 and I2 and I3 or an I4 as a factor. When we do that, we find that we have the equations that are indicated here. Now this, in this system, we've lined up the I1s, we've lined up the I2s, the I3s, and the I4s to make it easier to solve. And we're going to probably solve this by elimination. Okay, notice the negative 6 amps on the right-hand side here. It came from the 6 volts divided by ohms that was on the left-hand side. And, of course, the sign change when we brought it over here. I'm not going to go through the solution by elimination. This is some of the algebra that you're supposed to know. Um, just to indicate how I might go about solving this. I might write this as an augmented matrix if you know how to do that. If not, we could solve this equation for I1 pretty easily, uh, getting 3I2 plus 7I3 minus 12I4, and substitute that for all the I1s here. Having done that, uh, we won't have any I1s showing. It'll all be in terms of I2, I3, and I4. We can simplify the three equations that we get, and then we just have three equations in I2, I3, and I4, and then we can attempt to do some elimination on those three equations. Uh, and this really wouldn't be too bad. As an alternative, you can use uh, computer methods, uh, a variety of methods, to solve the system of equations. But when you solve it, you're going to get expressions for I1, I2. You're going to get numbers. You're going to get amps for I1, I2, I3, and I4. So that uh, uh, we will have solved the circuit. That's what we're after. And again, what that's going to tell us, if we go back to picture the original circuit, it's going to tell us what I1, I2, and I3, and I4 are so that we can calculate the current through every resistor here, resulting from the single 6-volt source. I'll also mention that uh, we don't have to have just a single 6-volt source. We could have another source over here, different voltage, same voltage, same direction, opposite direction. Uh, we can put as many sources in here as we want, corresponding to as many batteries or as many generators or whatever as we might wish to have.